Hello, veteran outdoorsman again. Well, today we're going to talk about uh, the last types of weapons that you'd give up or the types that you'd always want to have. Now, that discussion comes up and people say, well, you know, I always want such and such firearm, such and such this, such and such that. Well, we'll think about this. If it's if it's something that you always want to have nearby, that you want the least amount of failure, the mo to be able to use the most times for the longest period of time, a firearm is probably not your answer, and there's a reason for that. It'll run out of bullets. Now, you think, well, what else could be as effective as a firearm? do the same types of things, defend myself, feed my family, etc., etc. Well, there are some other options, and we're going to get into them here in a little bit. Now, don't get me wrong. A firearm should always be there. You should always have that. But there may come a time, okay, into the world scenarios, things like that. Think of this way. You're on a camping trip. You get stranded. You get, you lose your ammo. Your ammo gets wet. You you had just a few rounds, something like that. You left, left a firearm at camp, whatever the case may be. Um, you're forced into some kind of survival scenario. Some of these weapons that I'm going to mention could actually be improvised and made on site. Something that everyone should have. Always carry. And always keep sharp is a good quality knife this is just a random folder that I have but a good quality knife with a stout blade something that'll take a little bit of a beating something that's going to keep sharp you should always have a good quality knife no matter what that is one thing that you should never leave home without there are a few places you know you may work you're not allowed to carry a knife I get that it should be waiting for you in the truck when you get there, though. You should always have a good quality knife. That, in certain scenarios, could save your rear. There are plenty of times when people were in survival-type situations, had no idea that that's what was going to happen, and a knife saved them. The right knife can open canned goods. We can talk about some techniques where you can use it to start fires, etc., etc. A knife is first and foremost, you need to keep it sharp. You can improvise a spear with it. You can use it to cut um, kindling for firewood. Um, you got a good steel blade on it. You find a piece of chert, a piece of flint. You can start a fire with it. completely indispensable piece of equipment you have to have a knife you're in a situation you're stranded somewhere you can't come up with a knife you need to be finding some rocks breaking off a sharp piece that you can use as a knife you've got to have a sharp edge that's something we should always have on us now going on a little further you know some preparedness type things and and whatnot, survival weapons, whatnot. Um, a bow. Now, this won't be popular. Not a compound bow. Too many working parts, too many moving parts. Too many things can go wrong. A recurve or a long bow, preferably a takedown. Samick makes a great bow called a Sage. They also make a Journey. 162 inches long, 164. They make them in anywhere from like 25 pounds all the way up to 60 or 65, I believe, in draw weight. I own a Journey and a Sage, both in 55 pounds. I've shot them quite a bit. They're good bows. But they've got little finger screws. They take down. You can put the limbs, the riser, and some arrows in a backpack, and off you go. Great camping item. Um great just to to throw in your in your pack great item to have if you ever break a string 
and you're somewhere the right types of of bark can be made into a string different types of cordage like 550 cord you should always have some of that around can be used to make yourself a string arrows can be cut from reeds willows things like that you can make your own tips from from rocks you can sharpen the ends of sticks whatever a bow is indispensable you'll never run out of ammo you can repair it yourself a recurve or a longbow it is a great piece of equipment to have in your arsenal it won't run out of bullets we already mentioned the knife um, a wrist rocket a great thing to have and to master you know I'm a weapons guy I like different different things I like to learn how to shoot different types of weapons a wrist rocket's a great item to have um, the bands may break you can pack several bands you know you put a little backpack together with some camping items survival items some food some water stuff like that throw a wrist rocket in there throw some spare bands in there throw some anywhere from 375 to or they call that 36 caliber for muzzle loaders whatnot 36 caliber up to 50 caliber round balls in there some steel ball bearings some glass marbles you can use rocks um, I don't recommend that unless you have to because it can damage the bands. You can use these to take small game. You can use them to sling lines over limbs. Uh, guys have rigged arrows in them and used them to fish and hunt with. Neat, neat items to have. Um, say you're rigging up a line to throw out in a river. You put your hook close to your weight fling your line out there in a lake on the other side of the river whatever with your wrist rocket um, if you don't have a fishing pole things like that useful useful items again can take small game can take game like squirrels rabbits um, grouse pigeons things like that can feed you um, quiet don't have to worry about other people hearing you knowing where you're at eh, you know we're not talking about a zombie apocalypse or anything like that, but, you know, maybe you just like to go out in the woods and spend several days at a time and live off the land. You know, this is a neat option. They're fun to plink around with, play with. It's, it's, it's something nice to know how to use. If you've got some rubber, you've got access to some wood, you can make your own. They're, they're a neat tool to have. We mentioned bows. Mention slingshots, mention sharp knives. Another one would be an atlatl. Um, this is something that you could improvise on your own fairly easily. You need some sort of fletching, you can make that out of pieces of duct tape. You can find some feathers on the ground. You're out in the woods, turkey feathers are usually abundant, at least here in Missouri. Uh, then you need a handle with a notch to hold the, the dart or spear, whatever they call it. You can make one of them out of a reed make a tip from a piece of glass whatever you find and you can make your own atlatl you can carry one uh, atlatl is small can fit in a backpack pretty easy a couple of the darts stick out the side and you're good to go now don't get me wrong there there's certainly you know you sure certainly should have a firearm um a 22 pistol gets the nod for me for this type of thing you can defend yourself if you have to you can take small game but you can carry a large amount of ammo it doesn't weigh a lot and then uh air powered guns um i'm going to mention a couple of types here uh break break barrel um type pneumatic rifles either spring piston or gas piston are very common the gas piston is my preference because you don't have to worry about the spring breaking. The, the gas piston is pretty durable. They run the same in all types of weather and temperature. Uh, you can carry a lot of ammo for one in a small space and they don't weigh a lot. I have I have two gas piston, one spring piston um, air rifle. I've got a Beeman that's 22 caliber. I've got a Gamo that's 177 
that's a gas piston the beam and spring piston and i've got a benjamin silver eagle or something like that jim shockey edition 22 caliber with a nitrogen piston uh don't really fit in a backpack real well but you could strap them on the side something like that take small game readily i've killed i have killed a slew of small game animals all the way up to groundhogs and raccoons with different calibers of air rifles i had an old ben benjamin sheridan blue streak 20 caliber multi-pump squirrels rabbits crows uh, groundhog one time all sorts of things great great little gun fed me on many occasions just because I enjoyed it I went out and I leave my 22 my shotgun at home and I take that air gun and had a blast <laughs> with these spring brake barrel guns same thing I love them not a lot can go wrong if something does go wrong you're probably not gonna be able to repair it on your own but it's a risk I'd take if you could t have something like that. You know, take it camping with you. Take it uh, on long, long survival type hikes, things like that. They're fun. Planking, um, great to teach young people how to shoot. No recoil. They're great. They're awesome little guns. You can also get uh, pre-charged pneumatics, which is something I'd like to get into soon. And that is a gun that is charged from an external air source, either a scuba tank or a hand pump, similar to a bicycle pump, but much higher pressure, talking two, three, four thousand psi. You charge up the tank, you get several rounds out of it. You can get these things anywhere from 177 caliber all the way up to 50 caliber, and can take large game with the larger caliber guns. But we're, we'll talk about the smaller calibers. You know, multiple shots. You can pack one of those pumps in your backpack and continue to charge it. You can put a scuba tank for all that matters, but they get a little, little heavy. Take it with you on long camping trips and things. Use it to shoot small game to 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 put in a camp stew or whatever. You can use it for varmint control around the house. Shoot them in your basement. Air guns are great. Archer equipment, great. Slingshots, you know, quiet, powerful. These are weapons that you can take game with, that you could feasibly defend yourself with if you had to. That you can pack a lot of ammo cheaply. And it's just a fun alternative. Everybody likes to shoot guns. Hey. I own lots of them, I shoot lots of them, I'll never stop. But I also like my archery equipment. I've got crossbows, another option. You know, always have a knife. Learn how to shoot a bow, learn how to shoot a slingshot. Get you a good air rifle. Get you a good takedown, recurve or long bow. <laughs> Master these things. Learn how to shoot an adelatal, that's something I want to learn how to do soon. You know, the, these are alternative weapons. Opens up a lot of hunting opportunities, a lot of different sporting opportunities, a lot of target practicing opportunities, things you can shoot in your basement, in your backyard, as long as the regulations allow, without much trouble, without much noise, without as elaborate of a backstop. And they're great. This is Veteran Outdoorsman signing off.